All right, so we are live today. Welcome everybody. If you're new to this channel, my name is Stacy, and I'm here with Jamie, who is the CEO of the DCAC conference. And we're going to be talking about her fitness convention that's coming up virtually that I'll be presenting at. And we'll be talking so much about Jamie and just her background and her experience in the fitness industry as well as some of the trials and tribulations that all of us are going through right now, as well as her own personal um, personal experiences. And I can't wait to hear from her. If you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. And we'll talk a lot more about the fitness convention that um, Jamie will be leading at the very end as well and where to contact her. But first, Jamie, before I let you take the, the reins, I'm going to introduce you even more. So this is going to be a little, a little bit, a little bit. So, and I do have to read a little bit because it's a great bio on Jamie. So Jamie, as I mentioned, is the CEO of Fitness Conventions Incorporated. She plans and executes conventions for fitness professionals to further their education. And she has 18 years of experience in the fitness industry. She's an ACE group fit, certified group fitness instructor. And she has she started at DCAC fitness conventions as an assistant in 2001, and then built her way up in the industry, in the, in the fitness convention world, and is now the CEO of, um, of DCAC. And she lives in Richmond, Virginia. And so she's here during, we're on totally different timelines, but I love that we can connect <laughs> from yeah. so far away. And she is also, she has all these other roles. She's an independent distributor for the Juice Plus company. She volunteers at her church. She is the chair of the board of directors. She's on the board of directors there. And she even volunteers her time at Step Up for Down Syndrome events every year. And recently was um, just elected to the board of directors of the Hunley Foundation, where she shares the responsibility in guiding the, the foundation toward carrying its mission and provide fan financial assistance to a variety of charitable, religious, scientific, and educational organizations. And I have one more. <laughs> I forgot to also mention she manages at a, um, a restaurant, um, Marty's Grill in Mechanicsville, Virginia. Yes, ma'am. That, <laughs> that is just such an amazing long list of responsibilities that she has. And just to add, you know, for fun, she has two kids. <laughs> she has two children as well. And so what I am so excited to, yeah. to speak with Jamie about today is, as I mentioned, her life and her challenges in this current time and in the past. So welcome again, Jamie. Thank you. So the first question I have for Jamie, as you can tell, it's easy that she's experienced in leading, organizing, and working hard overall. But Jamie, what has what are some examples of challenges, setbacks, or change that you've had in your past and currently? Um, well, I have two big things. One of them I think we all share um, with COVID-19 pandemic, so I'll get to that second. But the first big challenge that I ever really faced in my life was in August 2017, um, I was 20 weeks pregnant with our surprise baby, um, my third child, and the doctor found a heart defect and as well as some other things that pointed towards Down syndrome. This was a week before our annual conference um, up in Northern Virginia, DCAC. And I got the call confirming that it was Down syndrome. And it was certainly devastating news at first, but I realized quickly after that it was because I was uneducated about Down syndrome. Um, so, you know, when you face a challenge like that, you you turn around and your whole world, it feels like it's upside down. And so what I did to help myself overcome that was just start researching and doing everything I could to find out about Down syndrome and how I was going to support my daughter. I got really good advice um, at the conference that year. I found out like the day of the event that this was happening and that she had a heart defect and they thought that, that everything was going to be okay with her. But I got some really good advice with people that, they said I could just sit back and like let this happen to me or I could stand up and kind of take control. And that was really like a turning point in, for me in my life. Um, I was 34 years old and I felt like that was the first time where I'm like, OK, I'm going to be in control of this and not let things happen to me. I'm going to I'm going to, you know, make this work to my benefit and figure out what I can do to support other people that are in my same situation and to support the Down Syndrome Association 
So I immediately started researching and find out everything that I could so that I could be an advocate for her. At the event, we set up an auction on the fly and um, raised money for the Down Syndrome Association association of greater richmond and that's where i got involved with them um and now i'm actually the event coordinator for their step up um, for down syndrome so i don't volunteer my time anymore i'm a paid person um but it's just a really great organization um that i got involved with and i still um, am involved with in november um of 2017 julie my daughter was born and everything was extremely difficult with her heart defect and the challenges that she faced but we were able to come home um, she was a really medically complex child, and she had so many challenges. Um, she was ad admitted back to the hospital on December 26th in 2017, and over the next four months, I lived at VCU Medical Center. So while trying, trying to raise my other two children at home with the help of my husband and my parents and my sister and my in-laws, um, well, I lived at the hospital, and I had my computer there. We had to figure out how to um, write contracts there and communicate with people by email and just do all of the event planning from another situation. So that was really difficult. Um, Julie had chemotherapy because she had a blood disorder. She had cardiac catheterizations, open heart surgery, and so many other procedures. It was just really um, a difficult time in my life, but I just kept plugging through. Um, my business partner at the time, Shannon, had been doing a lot of behind the scenes planning um, but like I said, I had my computer at the hospital and just worked as much as I could and just, you know, people kind of knew what was going on, but not to the extent because I wasn't really ready to share. And it wasn't really until the past past year um, that I have really started to share more about this experience that I went through in an effort to help others. Um, so everything normal kept going on with the business and we were living at the hospital in April 9th of 2018, Julie's heart stopped and my little girl went to heaven. Mm -hmm. um, it was a long journey to get there. She was um, just like I said, really medically complex. And it, there was just a lot of things that the doctors couldn't help with. And, um, you know, the only thing that really got me through that was my faith in God um, and knowing that she was here on earth for a reason. Um, the next four months after she passed were really challenging, but we had to keep plugging away and get the conference up and going. Um, so I shared my story and I did some fundraising, just tried to stay positive. And that event was amazing. So many people at the event rallied around me. Um, we had a huge fundraising event and raised over $10,000 for the um, Down Syndrome Association. And it was just a really good um, lesson in surrounding yourself with the right people that can uplift you when you're having times of trouble. So the, we got through all that. And then, you know, I really started um, investing in the relationships that I had with people. The 2019 event, which was last August, was even better. I really focused on the relationships we had with our sponsors and presenters. And at that event, I spoke with several people about possibly expanding. So I went from one year, like barely making it by planning the conference after my I had to bury my daughter to the next year of just going um head forward into buying out my business partner and planning an event across the world in Seattle. Um, yeah. I felt like I, um, I tried to make a unique plan because there's, there are other fitness events. There are uh, many other people that do the same thing that I do. And you know, one thing in business is you have to figure out what makes your conference set apart from others. And I felt like what, what set me apart from others was the relationships that I created with other people. It wasn't a huge company. It's me working out of my house um, and <laughs> my business partner working out of her house and putting on this show for a thousand people and um, really being involved in every single part of all of it. Um, there I go with the alms again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all that because I'm normally a behind the scenes person, but I am becoming a not behind the scenes person by sharing my story. Um, so I hit the ground running by December of 2019. We had the PNW FitCon. Sure. Yeah. And Stacy was a huge supporter of that. We were supposed to schedule to have that April 3rd through 5th of 2020. And um, we had everything finalized for both events. The contract's done. The registration was open. Things were rolling. It was great. And then the COVID-19 pandemic began. And I felt like I didn't know at the time, but looking back on this, I feel like that 
the trials that I've gone through in my life, which I'm sure many people have gone through trials as well. Everybody goes through different things. Now, nobody's is more difficult than anyone else's. Everybody's is just different. But I felt mm -hmm. like that the trial that I went through in my life kind of prepared me for how I was going to react to this situation with my business. You know, did I sit down one day and cry and think, oh my gosh, we have to cancel this event that I just planned? Yes, I totally did. Yeah. I love it. Um, but then I got up. And I started being an advocate for myself and my business this time. And what was I going to do to set myself apart and figure out how um, this was all going to work? For a while, I just stayed quiet because at the beginning, we didn't know what was going to happen. We rescheduled the PNW FitCon and we're hoping that that will happen in November of this year. But if it doesn't, we'll pivot and make a new plan. Um then all of a sudden it was May and I needed to decide to what, what to do. And when you plan events like that, the venue is a big, um, big part of that. You have to contract with the hotel and the sound company and the exhibitor company and all of these people that you're contracted with well in advance. You have to figure out what are their rules for cancellation? How is it going to affect other people? Um, but with the support of a lot of amazing people in the industry, I decided to take the event virtual. Um, this would be the 29th annual DCAC Fitness Convention and my 19th year attending. And it was a really hard decision, but I think it was one that we had to do just for the safety of others. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're doing it and it's happening in <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> um, uh, you want me to talk about that or do we want to? Um, no, that's perfect. Yeah, you. I mean, let's chat about it a little bit. So just hearing, I love how you've said that everyone's experience is, is not any harder than anyone else's. It's just different. And that can be spoken to a very tragic and devastating event as what you've explained. And I'm so grateful for you sharing that. And um, I, but then same with this pandemic, which is right. not nearly as devastating, but has, but is having those, way. yeah, I having those experiences. People I specifically remember one time I, I was in um, the hospital with my daughter and another mom came in and was talking about the trials that she was going through with her child and mm -hmm. the details about what was going on with the child. And I felt like she felt sorry for me and I felt sorry for her. And it was just mm -hmm. this whole, that's when I kind of realized like everybody has different trials and you think that, Oh my gosh, that's horrible. I'd never be able to get through it. But, you just do. You get up and you go through. And I think that's a lesson that we can all use during this pandemic as you get up and you figure out what you're going to do and you just plug away. You can't just sit around and collect unemployment. <laughs> no, I know. And it's how can it serve you? That's what you've done is you've pivoted your mindset in because we've said pivot like all the time in the fitness <laughs> industry. Pivot <laughs> online, pivot this, pivot that. But it's it's so true that you you can you can see how something can work for you. And right. I, rather than have that, you know, woe yeah. is me and everything's out to get me mindset. And that doesn't so. mean you can't feel like that for a little bit. Yeah. Because you totally can. Um, yes. One of the that. things that I like to um, point out is it wasn't easy when you've done mm -hmm. the same thing for so long. I mean, I wasn't in charge of the event and I did not found I wasn't one of the founders of DCAC, but I've been involved for a very long time. And we've done the same thing every year. You know, you book the hotel, you book the sound company, you book the presenters, you book the trade show, you make the registration packets, you do the software. Like you just, it's different content, but it's the same event. And I thought, oh, we'll just take it virtual. And man, has that been an eye-opening experience. I am very um, obsessive compulsive a lot. And I like <laughs> I like a little, details. you almost said a little, a little, <laughs> a lot, a lot. Yes. I like to know the details of everything. I am literally eating, breathing and sleeping this conference to try to make it work the best way that I can for me. And, um, you know, that is all with doing all those other things that you said, working at the church, working for the Down syndrome association, working at the restaurant, trying to have playtime with my kids. Um, what I found for me is that you, I find little snippets of time and that's when I work, but I'm always mm -hmm. thinking, always thinking about what I can do to make it better. Um, and what I've realized is that it's a lot more than I thought it was going to be. And you have to rely on other people and have those people in your life that are willing to help you and carry you through. And I've um, 
thankfully along the way found a lot of people that are very willing to support me um, and believe in what I do. And the reason that we do it is for continuing education for fitness professionals and um, sharing your knowledge and just trying to educate people and provide a good experience. Um, but the, what we're, what we're going to be doing is a little bit different. Normally we go to the hotel and you're at the hotel and you're there for three days and you spend the night there and you eat lunch there and you eat breakfast there and you eat dinner there and you work out and then you take notes and then you have a big party every night and then you go to sleep and then you get up and do it again for three whole days. So we thought that people don't want to be in front of their computer for three whole days because everybody has been trying to take their business virtual. So we thought we would spread it out over three weekends and have uh, four hours on Friday, July 31st, four hours on Saturday, August 1st, and then the same thing the following two weekends. But we're also going to record everything and have it available for attendees so that if the timing doesn't match up with your schedule, you can still register for the event and then get the continuing education credits, which is why people come to our events um, afterwards if, you, if it doesn't line up. So we've spread out the time commitment to make it easier to manage. Um, and the best part of is, I think, the recording. Maybe not the best part. Yeah. The best part is the presenters that we've lined up. We have some amazing people, including Stacy, here to offer everything from Schwinn cycling to hit classes to personal training um, to lectures and keynotes with Todd Durkin and Petra Kolber and Leslie Bender um, to LeBlast and High Fitness, um, Functional Aging Institute, Dr. Osar. And um, Wavemakers, uh, we have a really good program with Lori Denemy, who um, created Wavemakers, and it's all about educating the aquatic instructor, but you don't have to have a pool to do it. Um, she's really there to like help people take their aquatic um, business or what are the classes that they're teaching to the next level. And she's done a lot of research and polls and trying to figure out, because I feel like that aquatic instructors in our industry, it's been a super challenge for them because yeah. even though some of us are back in the gym in our 12 foot squares or outside, the people in the pool aren't back yet in many areas of the country. So she's done an amazing job with that. Um, I've done several Zoom trainings. So if you are interested in coming to the event, you can check out our website at dcacfitness.com. And I'm going to be having two trainings a week just to kind of walk everybody through how it's going to go. So it's not like you can just show up and go to a room now. You have to know yeah. what you're doing. Um, so I'm just trying to, you know, help people along the way. We'll have um, trade show breaks. So normally there's a big expo at the event and it's open to the public. So one of the things that we're doing this year is we're having 30 minute trade show breaks. Some of them are mini sessions. Some of them are a question and answer. Some of them are lunch with the presenter, just very informal. And we're going to broadcast them on Facebook. Um, so Schwinn will broadcast them on their Facebook page. Um, Bruce and Mindy are going to do lunch and broadcast it on their Facebook page. And that way it'll feel like it's open to the public, but really you'll only be able to be a participant and answer the questions if you're actually um, signed up and registered for the event. And so we're certainly disappointed that we're not going to be back together, but I feel like that we've set up a unique conference that's different from other people. That's a mixture of what you'd find at a conference, but mm -hmm. also we have the motivating um, speeches and the keynotes and the how to pivot your business and make changes due to COVID-19. So hopefully um, yeah. people will feel the same way. Yeah. And all of that is so creative to, as you mentioned, bring it to the public as well as those who've signed up. And the fact that you've even pivoted really the, the mindset behind what presenters are talking about, because you didn't just take the information that was going to be at that previous conference when we were pre-COVID, we are going to be addressing as presenters. I can't really take credit for that. I did say, can you come up with an idea? <laughs> <laughs> but I did um, play, you know, plan accordingly. And, and thankfully, yeah. we have a lot of really knowledgeable people in the industry that are um, bringing very high quality education to, to our event. Yeah, that's so relevant to today, too. It's exciting. Um, very excited. Um, and then really, so when I was hearing you explain what you've done for the conference and really how you've, the lessons that you've learned throughout this just change, I, I'm hearing that really some big lessons have been the relationships you've developed with right. the people you work with. Um, I'm hearing that you take your life and your, your multiple uh, wearing several hats 
taking one off, putting a new one on and being focused really on those isolated tasks and, and mindsets, right. and then not being afraid to ask for help. Yeah, I've heard question, question, question from the minute I had my first job. They said I was yeah. that like annoying little girl. I was like, how do you do this? What do you do there? What What are you doing? How do you do it? And when I was nine, when I was like nineteen or twenty, they made me the, one of the managers of the gym, taking care of the members. Um, it's just you know, never be afraid to ask for help because there's so many people that are out there who can lift you up. And if you surround yourself with those people, you're not gonna you're gonna be able to overcome anything. And what I've um, found, and one of the reasons I started sharing my story is. You know, I definitely want to spread the word about what I'm doing. But the main thing is, as I am now 37 years old and so many people have given to me and I and I'm like, it's time I have to I have to give back now. I have to be one of those people that can help other people. And if I can help other people by sharing my story or sharing the challenges that I've been through or how I've changed something that's what I'm going to do. Um, and just try to be like the people that I surround myself with, because if it wasn't for all of those people, you know, my family, my friends, people in the industry wanting me to be a better person, then I don't, I don't know that I would be here. I definitely wouldn't be here right now. And so that's what I'm trying to do, um, for others. Another uh, thing that I piece of advice is always keep learning. Um, whether it's, getting a new certification in the industry or whether it's going back to school, whether it's formal or non-formal or whether it's just chatting with someone about what you're doing. Um, one person that comes to mind is Michael Pipitone from Yes Fitness Music. From the time I was like 22 years old, he is just like, here, let me teach you how to do a spread, like tag your spreadsheet so that you can do this and that and the other. And I'm like, why are you so nice to me? Yeah. Just yeah. Like, such a, such a great person who is willing to share his knowledge. Um, so you don't have to be in a formal setting to get educated. Um, I mean, I've been educating myself with zoom right now. I'm calling that 1-800 number like every day, trying to figure out how this works, what to do, because that's one of the other reasons that sets our conference apart is I don't just own the business. I'm involved in every single part of it from the website planning to who is being contract to writing the contracts to figuring out everything. So if you educate yourself, you can put on many hats. Doesn't mean you're going to be the best at all of them, but you can certainly try. And the I last thing I have is work. Um, I've always been a really hard worker um, to a fault. You know, I definitely have to schedule time in there with my family. Like this morning we played Legos until lunchtime. Yeah. Um, I answer my phone and my email at 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., but I put it down when I'm having family time. I'm not 100% on the time on it, but I like to be available because especially yeah. working with people in different time zones and all around the world, um, yeah. you definitely need to just be available when people need you. And, yeah. um, you know, I'm a stay at home mom who runs this business and I have three other jobs and I just find little snippets of time to work. Um, but working is what, you know, the example that I try to set for my children um, that are still so good. I love that. I love that. And you, you tend to also, I've heard you focus on the bigger picture. Like it can be so overwhelming. I think the things that all those little jobs, big jobs can start to add up and it becomes overwhelming. But when you really reserve back to we're helping fitness professionals become better and that Perfect. big picture. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, that I love this. And then, um, it's, I mean, we've already talked about it before, but the skills, are there any specific skills that you feel you've been able to develop because of these challenges? Um, um, I think not necessarily skills that um, you can go to a class and learn, but um, one of the lessons that I've learned is just always be generous and kind. Um, one of the ways that we've been able to keep our business relevant in the industry is just to be generous and kind. And other people in the industry have been like that to me as well. Um, that it's just one of the things that sets us, up, sets us apart. We don't have an unlimited budget that some of these other companies do, but I value what every single person brings to the table that I work with. And I have some really great relationships with these people in the industry. And it's because they're generous with their time and talents that I try my best to structure the events so that everybody benefits. 
um, because I want them to want to be a part of what I do. Um, and I certainly want to work with them. And the other lesson that I've learned is believe in yourself. And I feel like it took me a lot longer than some people. I mean, most people probably by the time they're 37 are, you know, have confidence, but I feel like it's just most recently that I've been really having the confidence in what I do and that what I do is important. And, you know, some people aren't going to like it and that's okay. Not everybody has to like what you do. Um, but if you believe in yourself and you really truly are doing your best and your, your goal is to um, help others, I think that you can't re can't really go wrong. You know, life is always changing. Some it's like a revolving door. Sometimes you go in, sometimes you go out. You always have to adapt to that change. And I think um, COVID nineteen kind of shut the world down, and not everybody knew how to adapt. And I mean, I stayed quiet for a while. So I think it definitely took some of us longer than others. And maybe you're in that position where you're not ready to adapt to change. Um, sometimes life events adapt sometimes spur that change. But if you keep learning, you surround yourself with the people, you act generous and you act kind towards others, you work hard and you believe in yourself. I be really feel like you can take any situation and turn it into something positive. So good. We have to end on that. That was like the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everyone just record that last sentence. <laughs> so good. So Thank good. you so um, much for having me on. I so appreciate it. Of course. And then um, where you guys can go to sign up for the DCAC conference is www.dcacfitness.com. And you can sign up and it's not too late to jump no, in, to get in, to get signed up and jump on the computer and spend three weekends, which I love that it's in those bite-sized chunks mm -hmm. with some of the industry leaders. Yes. Including yourself. Yay. Yeah. I'm the last weekend. So August August 14th, that Friday, mm -hmm. will be me. <laughs> Myself, okay. Shannon, and Petra. So I'm excited. so excited about that. So excited. Well, Jamie, I cannot thank you enough for being here today and sharing thank all of this. Me. And um, if you guys also go to dcacfitness.com, you'll find out even more about Jamie. And, and I'm sure you watch her training videos as well um, <laughs> to, learn, to learn more about her, have fun with her. And she's a great person. I'm so excited to see thank you. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. All right.